Passive income is a myth here on YouTube with thousands of videos promising easy ways to money with no work involved. In this video, I'll reveal three legitimate income business ideas you can start with little or no money. You'll still need to put in some work getting started, but these are the three best business ideas I've seen for the speed at which they become passive and the money you can make in them. We're talking passive income business ideas today on Let's Talk Money. Beat that. Make money. Make your money work for Creating you. Creating the financial future you deserve. Let's talk money. Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the community. Thank you for taking a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. One of the most popular videos here on the channel has been a list of seven passive income ideas and how I make money online. I got a lot of feedback on the video about how many were smaller sources of income, so I wanted to follow it up with some bigger passive income business ideas. These are all going to be legit business ideas you can start with no money and then grow into a passive income stream that's going to sustain itself. So I'm going to be showing you my three favorite passive income businesses, how to get started and how much you can expect to make. In all three of these businesses, you'll be able to get started quickly and provide passive income within a year of getting them off the ground. I'll then be revealing three secrets to making passive income online, three rules for success no matter which of these business ideas you go for. So make sure you stick around for that. I do want to say first though, if you're looking for income you get every single month without having to put any work or money into it, it doesn't exist. There's a big lie here on YouTube that creating passive income is easy or that investing is passive income. It's like passive income sightings and grainy photos. Nothing is going to create money out of nowhere and I don't consider investing passive income because, well, you had to do something to earn that invested money in the first place. So these three passive income business ideas of all the ones I've seen and I use are the ones that are going to get you to that passive income point fastest. You'll still have to set them up, maybe work on them for a few months, but they grow fast enough and can be managed to be as passive as possible very quickly. Our first passive income business idea is creating virtual summits and conferences. Now, I love my experience going to a conference of financial bloggers each year, but the total cost is upwards of three grand for a five day trip. I always pick up enough ideas to make it worth it and the community is great, but that cost is a killer for a lot of people. Virtual summits are a great way to still get that sense of community and the inside knowledge, but without all those travel costs and the hotel costs. So there are different ways to structure your virtual summit. As, at a minimum, you'll have at least 10 to 30 video sessions around half an hour or more where a speaker is going to talk about a topic. Now, this is the core of your conference, but you also want to add in other features to set it apart from other virtual events. Some good add-on ideas are an online forum or even better, a group video chat to create that community interaction. You can set up a special online networking events and a private Facebook group as well. You can also work with sponsors to offer special discounts on their products. Now, a friend of mine, Liz Stapleton, recently finished up her Side Gig Summit, a virtual conference of 25 side hustle ideas with speakers in each. By the end of the summit, she had over 200 registrations and had a ticket price between $100 to $400 each. The beauty of virtual summits is that you keep getting registrations even after that official launch. All those video sessions stay up to earn passive income every month on new registrations. Getting started with your virtual summit means knowing a niche and being part of a community within that niche, whether it be online or a traditional business entrepreneurs. You need to get to know some of these people that are really crushing it. Then you reach out and get them to speak for a 30 minute video interview. This can be an interview format or them just delivering a presentation about the topic. To get speakers for the event, you can offer a cut of the ticket sales or the ability to sell their own products or services, but some might do it just for the experience and to get their name out there. I prefer offering a commission on the sales rather than letting speakers pitch their own products because this way you make sure that you give as much information as possible without holding back anything to sell people into their courses. Setting all this up is actually the easy part. You can record all your videos and upload them to a platform like Teachable. Now this is going to give you the ability to charge for your summit, set up coupon codes, and then get other people to help sell it through an affiliate program. Teachable is the platform I use to host all my online courses and the one I see used most often by bloggers and other online entrepreneurs. The site's offering a free live training on seven steps to launch your own online course or summit, so I'll leave a link to that in the video description below. Now, marketing is the biggest challenge in virtual summits, but there are ways to make this completely passive as well. The easiest way is to work with your speakers as affiliates to promote a few weeks before the launch. You can also do free videos here on YouTube that feed into a registration page and then you'll pick up a lot of ideas on that free training on the Teachable site. Now a couple of tips here for success before we move on to that second passive income business idea. 
First is that you want to make your virtual summit topic as narrow as possible. You don't want to do a summit on something like being an online entrepreneur or personal finance. This is just too broad and it'll make marketing more difficult. Instead, take that broader topic and narrow it down. Instead of personal finance, maybe make it about investing or paying off debt. Instead of being about an online entrepreneur, make it your focus of blogging or vlogging or e-commerce. This means you can hit every theme within that smaller topic with your video sessions and you'll provide much more detailed information. Second is to really push your speakers to provide quality and detailed information in their sessions. Have at least a couple pre-recording calls with each speaker to see what they're going to talk about. Ask for an outline and then ask questions to make them think deeper into the topic. Our next passive income business idea is an interesting mix of that online and offline worlds, creating a co-working space with coaching and equipment rental. I love this one because it's a little of both worlds, that online and offline. In that gig economy, we're talking independent and contract workers, it's growing by double digits a year and is expected to reach 9 million workers by 2020. Employers love it because of those lower employment costs and freelancers love it because of that freedom and potentially higher pay. But starting as an independent worker and just that daily work can be tough. In school, we're taught to be a cog in the wheel, a part of the machine and do what you're told. Out in the gig economy, you have to be the one that organizes and manages and gets things done. Beyond all this, the flip side to that independence is that freelancing can be like a solitary confinement at times. Now that's where co-working spaces come in. Shared office spaces rented out on a daily or monthly basis to freelance workers. Now the co-working idea isn't new, but you can make yours unique by adding in new ideas like training videos or equipment rental. To get started, you'll need a large open floor plan with at least 1,800 square feet. Get the fastest bandwidth internet package offered by your local provider. A good rule of thumb here is that you have at least 5 megabits per second of download per active user at any one time. You'll also need some furniture, both individual desks, long communal tables, and some more comfortable stuff like beanbags and couches. Increase your revenue sources by having a small coffee shop that can serve beverages, snacks, and sandwiches. Now the budget on this thing can be as much as 10 grand, so it helps to go in with some partners or investors. Another way to get funding is to get commitments from freelancers ahead of time at a discounted rate. If you pre-sell enough spots or bring in just two or three investors, you can easily start this one off with no money on your part. Now, how much you charge is going to depend on the city, but the U.S. average for is around $300 a month in smaller cities and rents as high as a grand in larger metros. The food and beverage sales are generally around $100 each month per member. Now, monthly operating costs are going to be in the couple thousands, but you can see how just having 10 or 20 people using your space and you're clearing several thousand dollars a month. Once you get a co-working space started, it's very low management. In fact, a freelancer or blogger could manage it themselves while working their normal workday or you can hire someone to manage the space and the cafe workers. Now, this is definitely closer to the traditional business idea than the other two passive income business ideas we'll talk about, but it's one of the least management intensive I've seen. It can be a great second source of income for someone working as an independent worker and passive income if you hire out that management. I do want to cover a few tips to setting up your co-working space to avoid some of the biggest mistakes I've seen. First, prohibit members from setting up their own wireless device and network. You get too many networks in a confined space and it's just going to create interference and slow speeds. Put together a Wi-Fi infrastructure that can handle multiple users and everyone uses that. Also use virtual local area networks or VLANs for each person to keep everyone on a level playing field for their bandwidth usage. Otherwise you get a few people trying to eat up all the internet speed and it screws everyone else on the network. You might also just consider wiring up each workstation with a cable internet connectivity or at least each individual workstation. It's an inexpensive solution and it's going to provide the most reliable connection for your users. Now we're going to see one of those three success tips I'll be sharing at the end of the video really come into play here. The idea of getting as many income sources out of your business as possible. So getting that rented space, equipment rental and food sales. I'll talk more about this in those three success tips after our next passive income business idea. So make sure you catch those. Our third passive income business is going to be to create an affiliate marketing website, but with a twist. Affiliate marketing is partnering with a company to promote their product or service. You get a link to include in your articles or social media posts. Uh, if someone clicks on that link and makes a purchase, you get a commission. Now I do affiliate marketing on my websites and make a good amount of money each month, but it's not quite as passive as you might think. I average just over three grand a month from affiliates, but that means creating one or two new articles a month to keep things growing along. The way you make this more passive is by creating a website more narrowly focused on a product or service. Instead of a blog on personal finance like I've got, you create one about debt consolidation or debt counseling. 
Instead of a blog about making money, you create a site specifically about starting a website. Now this narrower focus is going to make it easier to rank on Google and it's going to attract a very specific target audience. That focus is also going to make it more valuable to affiliate companies with a product or a service. That means you'll get more offers to write guest posts for your website. Now I'm not talking about those spammy guest posts of 500 words. All the bloggers out there know what I'm talking about. No, here we're talking about those quality articles that give readers a value and solve a problem. Writing content is 80% of running a website, so if you can get these free as guest posts from others, that's about as passive as you can expect on your part. Now I usually recommend bloggers start with a passion project or a hobby for when they're starting a website. This might not be the case here if you're starting an affiliate comparison site. You might actually love talking about underwater basket weaving, but there just isn't much money to be made in it. Instead, look for some of the most profitable niches that are related to your favorite hobby. You can do this by searching for the most expensive keywords and advertising on Google. So you'll see some things like insurance, loans, mortgage, attorney, uh, credit, and even mattresses. After you've got a niche idea for your affiliate business, you'll go to the affiliate networks like Commission Junction and ShareASell to look for companies with programs. These programs pay anywhere from $20 into the hundreds of dollars for each commission, and signing up takes less than a minute each. You'll set up your website and spend a few months writing articles to build your rankings on Google. Within six months, you'll start getting offers from affiliates to post content, and you can reach out to them to have them write articles. You'll also get offers from other bloggers to write content for your site. Now I've got a complete step-by-step -step guide to starting a website that I'll link to in the video description below. It's going to get you started and get your site up to start that affiliate business idea. So those are our three passive income business ideas. Again, it's not like any of these are going to set up in a day and start making passive income immediately. That just doesn't exist. What I want to give you in this video is three legitimate ideas to take a minimal effort and time that can provide a few thousand or more a month once you get them going. Now I want to share those three success tips that are going to help you get these or any online business started and making as much money as fast as possible. First is that you can't just think of it in terms of a product or service. Spend as much time thinking about and understanding marketing and how you're going to reach your customers. As an online entrepreneur for over six years now, I can tell you that it isn't just about your product, but how well you get it in front of people. I know it sucks that you can't just create something great. You have to actually create that marketing and that funnel system to sell the idea. Now the next tip is going to help you make these ideas as passive as possible, and that's to learn quickly what parts of the business you can outsource. Now this might mean making just part of the business passive like getting that free content for your website or it might mean turning it completely passive like hiring out management for your co-working space. Get involved in a community of similar business owners to see what they're hiring out and how they're making their business passive. Our third tip and this is one of the most important is to learn how to create multiple income streams from your one business idea. In that co-working idea, this meant food and beverage sales, maybe equipment rental and training courses along with that main space rental. In the virtual summit idea, it might mean sponsorships or affiliates along with those ticket sales. Creating those multiple income streams is going to help you increase and also smooth out your revenue if, if any sources fall a little in a month. You'll build a more reliable source of passive income and it's going to be more successful. We're here Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays with the best videos on beating debt, making more money, and making your money work for you. If you've got a question about money, just subscribe to the channel and ask it in the comments below. We'll make sure you get an answer in a future video.